So, good evening, you wonderful people. It's nine o'clock. Well, it's not actually. It's three minutes past nine. It's the 28th of March. We are live uh, on Facebook right now. If you're listening on the audio experience or you're watching on YouTube or anywhere else I've recorded this and put it out, thank you so much for listening or watching or whatever. Come and join us one Monday night. We do this every single Monday night, 9 p.m. till 10 p.m. Um, I've done it now for about eight years. Uh, we talk everything acting, all things act on this.tv. Tonight, I'm going to be pulling the curtain back on uh, a trailer training that I did on Saturday and also enrolment to a just like just basically the best thing I've ever ever produced coaching program wise if you are looking for your first TV role as an actor you feel you're doing everything you've been told to do maybe you've got an agent and you've been with them for months or whatever but you're banging your head against a brick wall because you can't get auditions to save your life you don't know what's going on you're going to want to get involved in something called first TV role fast track 2022 I open enrollment for that on Saturday you can go to actsonlist.tv forward slash first role if you want to find out more information but I'm going to tell you more information on this broadcast about that tonight it's super exciting Nearly 100 actors have signed up already. I'm going to close the doors in just a couple of days. If you are ultimately committed, and I mean like committed, no dabblers, no hobbyists, no people who are like, oh, well, I'll give it a go. Like If you are seriously committed um, to landing your first TV role and you basically want my help doing it, someone who's done it over 30 times, um, then uh, get yourself over to actsonlist.tv forward slash first role and read about it. Um, you can ask me any questions you want on this broadcast tonight. And I'm going to play out some clips from past students, including Josh, who is here live, who I um, mentioned at the beginning, who's, uh, yeah, TV role, uh, first TV role aired on Emmerdale um, at the start of March. And Josh, I think you probably have been the fastest person to implement the blueprint that we give out here. Someone who came from a theatre background, they didn't know anything about TV, basically, came into the programme. I think you were the fastest person to implement it and land your job, mate. It was like four months or something crazy. Um, other people have done it in five, six months, um, but Josh nailed it, basically. You're probably like, you know, star student, really, Josh, <laughs> at the moment. So uh, so I'll talk a little bit about that. I also want to recap on a live mastermind session that we did with one of the biggest casting directors in TV uh, and his team, Mr. Daniel Edwards, joined us last week. This is that's on this.tv, the site I'm showing right now. Those people on the audio experience, just imagine it. It's a beautiful-looking site. Um, go to act's on this.tv if you want to see it. Click into the preview section here. And you can see all of the features we've done recently. Literally every week I sit down with the biggest cast directors, agents, actors, writers, producers. We hold a private Zoom call and ultimately chew the fat on what it takes and get the inside scoop on uh, what it takes to succeed, ultimately as an actor, and to land auditions with these people. Daniel Edwards and his uh, entire team, Lucy Allen and Tom Payne, joined us last week. Daniel cast some of the biggest stuff in TV, things like Line of Duty, upcoming Netflix smash Heartstopper, Show Trial, the show that was on BBC Two this time last week, uh, well, almost this time last week, then Barbara Matt Allen starring Ruth Madeley and Arthur Hughes. You can see in that picture there. The team cast that as well. And ultimately, last week we just we just had a really open honest chat um just about the industry where it's going diversity inclusion and and we were talking you know when when we talk about like diversity and inclusion anyone who thinks that they are just you know a typical person you know like i don't know you're like right well you know i'm not in a ethnic minority i you know i'm cisgendered um you know i'm just british so i don't have any you know fancy accent or language skills um you know all this stuff you know i don't have a disability you know i'm just a typical person um that still does not mean that like you cannot be marginalized to some degree by the way just like that's just legit it might be your background you know you might you may come from a working class background you might not have loads of money um you know you might think that just where you live in the in the country marginalizes you you know you don't live in london or manchester you're an actor and you're trying to make it but you're living in cornwall i don't know there's not a big industry there um being there's not a single person who who I don't think is not marginalized to some degree okay so we talked all about that and opening up the conversation um and uh it was just like super super interesting uh, we talked a lot about disability um because Daniel had just cast then Barbara Matt Allen which was a BBC show that focuses on that um we talked a lot around sexuality and gender um in the industry because he, he's just cast Heartstopper a big massive brand new Netflix uh, show that drops on the 22nd of April. Here's a little bit about uh, what we talked about. And if you want to watch the whole like nearly two hour session, um, it's in the members area on atsonthis.tv. If you were there and you watched it while I'm playing this out, let me know in the chat um, what you thought of it, like what your biggest takeaway was. Um, and if you agree with what I just said, you know, everybody to a certain degree is marginalized. If you're like, look, you know, I'm just a, a typical, in inverted commas, normal person. Um, check this out. 
Fresh from casting, brand new BBC drama, then Barbara Matt Allen, upcoming Netflix smash Heartstopper, ITV's Grace, Show Trial, Line of Duty, the list goes on. It's casting director Daniel Edwards, his casting associate Lucy Allen, senior casting assistant Tom Payne and top dog Mavis in about 20 minutes. Folks, welcome back to Acts on This. How are you? I want to start with this show Yay! That, that, was, that was on TV on BBC Two last night, 9pm. Um, fantastic show, folks, um, starring Ruth Madeley and Arthur Hughes. Um, Daniel and the team cast this show. Um, I had a little cameo in it. I'm going to play a little clip out now that might include that cameo. Sorry, Joe, I'm just going to have to stop you there. We are just about out of time for this week. Thank you so much to our guests. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. And then we're going to look at the truth and the reality of casting disabled actors, because what were the stats on this? Was it like 90 odd percent of, of people be in front of and behind the camera would, uh, had a disability? Yeah, there cannot be any more excuse from networks or producers or directors or anybody to say there isn't, um, uh, the talent isn't good enough. 2022, how is, how has this just come on television last night? Heartstopper, have a little rant about this. Give yeah. us a, a 30 second synopsis and I'm going to play the trailer. It's just normal boy meets boy in high school, falls in love, and it's lovely! <laughs> There's a boy in there waiting for you. Oh, right. is it their secret boyfriend or the straight boy crush? People listening today may go, oh, well, I'm not part of the Heartstopper community or the Ben Barbara Met Allen community, but I can guarantee you're probably part of something that is marginalised. Every single one of us have our otherness, and as actors, every actor has their otherness. But just because you're a trans actor doesn't mean you're going to be cast. You know, it's, ha right. you're, you know... You still have be... to be f***ing good. This is just one small step at the moment, which is groundbreaking, but now it just needs to keep moving forward. The industry is opening up, you know, the space for everybody. It, and I think that's really important to know. Unlock the full two-hour session over at this.tv plus a shed load more, I nearly swore there, um, of sessions that I've held over the past, well, God, I mean, years, ultimately. There's probably 300 hours worth of coaching from the biggest cast directors, agents, actors, writers, producers in TV, actsonthis.tv, if you want to get access to that. One word that I loved in that, that I'd never heard anybody use before, Tom said, every actor's got their otherness. And for you, you know, it could be anything. It might be like your age. I feel like I've come to the industry too late or, you know, or maybe you're super young or whatever it is. Every actor has their otherness. You don't have to, you know, like have a disability or, you know, or be from the LGBT community or have an, you know, and being an ethnic minority or something to feel, um, you know, that you have an otherness or something unique ultimately to offer uh, to offer the industry or something that makes you feel a bit marginalised that, you know, maybe you've been looking at as a uh, as a hurdle right now, but actually it is your otherness. It's your uniqueness. It's your superpower. It's something that you should actually be embracing. Um, I'm visually impaired for years. Um, I. I uh, tried to hide it. I, I genuinely thought if I tell people I've got a, a, a retinal condition uh, called retinitis pigmentosa, which means I've got no peripheral vision up or down. And my vision is terrible at night. Like it's really bad at night. And um, I hid it at drama school. I was like, literally when I was in the blackouts on stage in the theater, I couldn't see shit all. I could see nothing. But I thought, no, if I tell the tutors, they're not going to put me in stuff. They're not going to want me, you know, to, to have a lead role in something like that because maybe they'll think I'm a liability. Um, it took me during a movement session to headbutt this girl so hard called Helen, bless her, completely by accident, guys. I didn't do it on purpose, but we were doing that traditional, I hate it, to be honest with you, that traditional drama school bullshit of r run to a space, walk to a space, run to a space, walk to a space, keep moving. It was all... What a waste of money that was. Um, <laughs> just to be frank, they charge actors 47 grand for that nowadays. Um, but yeah, Helen came out of nowhere because I had no peripheral vision. I headbutted her so hard, um, nearly knocked her out, poor girl. Um, and then the director went mental at me. What are you doing? Like, really, like, kicked off. Because obviously to him, it looked like I was just stupid. Um, he didn't know I had a disability. Um, and I had to then out myself as, you know, someone who, who was living with a visual impairment. And uh, I thought, oh, shit, they're all going to hate me. Um, and they're not going to put me in stuff because, you know, I'm no use in scene changes in the dark in the theatre. Um, it was completely the opposite. <laughs> like, they were like, ah, oh, okay, now we get it. Now we understand why it looks like you've got no spatial awareness whatsoever. Um, it's not because you're just shit at your job. Um, so, uh, 
yeah, like the thing that I was holding back is like, this is the thing that's actually going to cause me problems became a superpower for me, really, because people sort of led with curiosity. They wanted to know more about it. They didn't shun me. They weren't like, yeah, get out of the industry. Um, and I've landed roles off the back of it, to be blunt with you. That role that you just saw me play in then Barbara Matt Allen, um, I'm sure a, a big part of me getting seen for that show is because they wanted to embrace disability. So whatever your otherness is... Like stop hiding it from the world. Ultimately, is the uh, is the message there? Start embracing it, and just maybe just make a paradigm shift in your thinking, and go. How can I look at this as happening for me and not happening to me? And you make a huge difference in the way that you operate in the world uh, when you look at your otherness like that. So let me know if you think you've got an otherness in the chat. Um, I want to know what it is, uh, and then I'm going to talk. I've got so much to talk about. I don't know what to talk about first. Really, I'm going to tell you what's going on tomorrow night for members of Ats on This TV. Um, let us. Uh, uh, let us know if you're going to be around tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. And I'm going to read a, uh, a couple of these uh, comments here. Um, so Indra reckons, yeah, so he's an ethnic minority, perhaps racially ambiguous. There's a positive. So Indra, yeah, what is your, I can't remember what your your heritage is, mate. Is it, I can't remember. It's not, you. Oh, was yours, it wasn't Iranian, was it? What, or was it? I don't know. Or is that, there's a few people in the Outsiders community who, uh, who are from, who have like really unique, super, super interesting uh, ethnic mixes where their, their mum and dad were from like completely different continents um, and it just makes like you know just a really interesting sort of uh, ethnic mix really but yeah let us know Indra I, don't, I can't remember what it is mate Chris says I'm a disabled Geordie lad uh, and I always get given roles that have disabilities but far worse uh, than I actually am so it's tough to get roles but I feel change is coming in a big way Chris I don't know if you watched that full session with Daniel Edwards if not, go over to actsonthis.tv try the site out for a month if you want just get a membership for one month if you're not already a member such an interesting uh, session where we talk about that and also just casting people with this otherness, with disabilities and stuff in roles that don't include them in terms of like, you know, you don't have to play a disabled, uh, like it doesn't have to be a, like mentioned in the script that, they're, you know, that the person is disabled or something it just happens to be played by an actor who has a disability, but it's not really part of the story. Um, that's where hopefully we're, uh, we're heading. So you're not just getting all of the, uh, you know, all of the Geordie roles. It's like a few years ago, a few of my mates were Muslim actors um, and they just all, they were just like, mate, all I'm ever getting seen for now is terrorist roles. Um, it's like, you know, <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? How we just sort of like label, okay, if you look like this, you've got to play that right now because that's sort of like the thing that we're making. If you're disabled, you have to play a heavily disabled person in the show who we actually feel really sorry for. You can't be the hero of the piece or, you know, we can't just have something that's a story that's nothing to do with your your disability. Um, but watch that, mate. It's a, it was a really, honestly, really, really interesting uh, interesting chat that we uh, that we had last week. Um Let's have a look. Sarah says, I remember that. What, Sarah, you, what is he talking about? The walk up and down bit in drama school, yeah. Walk, walk into a space, walk into... It was just like, could the tutors not think of anything worthwhile? All I did for my degree at drama school, not knock... Well, I'm probably sounds like I'm knocking it, but I think, to be honest, it didn't prepare me remotely how I wanted to be prepared for working in TV and film. That's why I created this community and basically did did all of the training myself when I left drama school. But for drama school, basically, I spent three years lying on the floor in semi-supine, um, breathing through my nose and then out of my mouth and then walking and, and dashing around the movement studio for 15 grand. Like I say, 47 grand that nowadays. If you really want an education that's going to lead to actually paid acting work, um, 247 quid a year for naught point, what would that be of my degree? 0.02% of my degree. Um, you can, uh, I'll give you a better education. That's on this.tv, you get a membership. Natalie says, I'd like to see more roles that cater to diverse body types without making it the butt of, the jo of a joke. Yeah, absolutely. Body composition definitely could be, you know, someone's otherness, um, you know, but again, kind of like, you know, it's, a, it's about maybe making that paradigm shift. If you're comfortable and happy, with your body composition, you know, and you're cool with it, why shouldn't everybody else be? So um, that's something that maybe you should embrace as opposed to, yeah, people need to embrace as opposed to looking at something that, you know, could uh, could hinder or something like that. And sometimes, you know what, you've got to make your own stuff to prove the concept sometimes, to be honest. This BBC Two drama last week, then Barbara Matt Allen, now is such a proof of concept for any producer or director anywhere saying it's so hard to make good quality drama with, with a full disabled cast because it's just not. It was probably harder but it definitely didn't cost more money because the budget for that show was tiny. That's just the reality of it because, you know, I still think, and this is just the facts, 
channels, networks like the BBC, like ITV, they don't think they can make money out of stuff that isn't sexy and normal and like beautiful looking people and everything's perfect. So a show full of disabled people, they were like, they didn't throw enough money at it. And that's just me being, I was in it. And that's just me being frank with everybody. If the BBC ever sees this, put more money into these shows because it's been proven through this show that people will watch. Um, and you know there was a load of really positive noise about that show on uh, on Twitter. But yeah, you know stuff that isn't typical, uh, they feel won't make you know won't make as much money. So people don't want to throw money at it until the point is proven that it could. I mean, look at that with Black Panther. That was an incredible uh, box office smash. Yet nobody probably wanted to put money behind it for forty years because they're like, this isn't going to sell. You know, this isn't just full of white, beautiful people. Um, so, uh, so yeah, sometimes you've got to, you know, you've got to prove a point. So anyone on here who's, who's, you know, got that otherness that they're thinking, ah, oh, you know, I, uh, this might hold me back. Sometimes make your own stuff and prove, you know, prove a point really. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Greg says he's a method actor, wants to turn to TV. Um, he wants to be very, very, he's told he's very good at it. Greg, I've got something for you in a minute, mate, that I'm going to, I'm going to pull the curtain back on. Um, Shiv, good evening. How are you? It says he's got a history of epilepsy and have a scar on my right hand side of my temporal lobe with a mild learning disability. Uh, as an Indian, that's my otherness. That's otherness, man. Exactly. It's, um, yeah, you know, that's something that, that, that definitely you should embrace. And depending, I don't know where you, I don't know how visible that scar is, mate, but, um, you know, how it's, I wouldn't try and hide it all the time and stuff. And, you know, maybe if you show that in your headshots, um, depending if, it, if you can't see it like straight on or something like that, I don't know, you don't have to do like profile headshots or anything like that. But it's interesting, isn't it? Everyone's got something. That's the thing. As I'm getting older, like you realize like, look, I'm not going to be ashamed of anything because everybody's freaking got their own shit going on, whether it's visible or invisible. Everybody's, you know, is dealing with something. Um, so tomorrow night for members of AtsOnThis.tv, if you're not a member, come and join us. I have got an incredible um, casting associate, now casting director, because this incredible woman has just landed um, her first casting director credit for a massive streaming service. Alyssa Rogers is going to join us tomorrow night, 7.30pm. She is uh, Fiona Weir's casting associate right now. Fiona casts huge things like Brassic, if you're a, uh, a big fan of uh, Brassic, T Ted Lasso for Apple. Um, Alyssa's been a key part of those projects. Um, but she's just, a couple of weeks ago, had the call from her agent saying she has now landed her own streaming service show because she's NDA'd up to the eyeballs so can't really talk about the name of the project or exactly what's you know what it entails but um she's going to be heading up as casting director on this new streaming service show so we're gonna be talking about that tomorrow night getting on her radar she's massive on mindset Alyssa if you're not following Alyssa on Twitter please follow her she's just like a ray of sunshine every single day um if you need positivity and motivation in your life just follow her definitely you know Twitter's toxic as hell today like everybody He's got an opinion on the Will Smith Chris Rock issue. I'm not going to get into it tonight because it's political and I can't be asked. But um, Alyssa uh, is not one on Twitter to ever post anything that's not basically super upbeat and, uh, and lovely. So that's going on tomorrow night, 7 30 p.m. Um, if you want to uh, get involved in that, go to actonthis.tv forward slash live, which I'll show you now. You'll see the live schedule um, and you'll see a video there about why you want to join this community. It's happening in 22 hours and eight minutes. You can read a little bit about Alyssa there. Get your membership. Kick the tires for a month if you're not part of the community yet and you're like, what is this? And you want to sit down every week with the biggest names in the game. Um, get a membership for a month. You don't have to stay if you don't like it, but I guarantee you'll just be like most people and like, where the hell have I been? How have I not discovered this before? So uh, do check that out. What I want to talk about now um, is something that I did, that I quietly launched at the weekend. And this is something that I'm so freaking ridiculously proud of. It's ultimately my life's work at the moment. Um, I surveyed the actors in the Acts on This TV Facebook group. There's 10,000 of them in there. And discovered that only two and a half thousand, roughly, you know, one in four actors had landed their first TV role yet. And I was like, wow, there's so many actors in here who I know are strong actors, who are decent actors, who should so be working. What is going wrong? And ultimately, through working with test groups and test groups of actors and more and more and more over the last 18 months... Um, I discovered what I already knew, really, that the business of the business, like the, the coaching on the business part of this business, 
um, is just like massively lacking. It's what we focus on at onthis.tv. Um, it's what I'm obsessed with. I love the business side of this industry. And over the last 18 months, I've now put together the most in-depth coaching program literally on earth that is 100% proven now. It has got dozens of actors, their first TV roles, who have previously struggled for years. Um, and uh, yeah, put this together. It's called First TV Role Fast Track, the 2022 Ultimate Edition launched on Saturday for enrollment. Um, if you're interested in sort of finding out more about it and seeing what's involved in there, go to actsonlist.tv forward slash first role. But ultimately, it's 12 hours of pre-recorded video coaching. There's a workbook that goes along with that for you to go through step by step. We cover everything from casting type, headshots, showreels, the shows you should be approaching specifically for your first TV role, the casting directors, assistants and agents within them, their contact info, how you write emails, how you track emails, how you dress emails up, tactics, strategies. Um, there are mastermind calls in there. In fact, let me go over to the site, to that page. Um, where is it? There are mastermind calls in this program. Um, as well with some of the biggest names in the business. If you're looking at headshots, Mr. Tony Blake, the best headshot photographer, um, I believe, in the uh, in the UK. Chris Stone, the best showreel producer in the UK. Head of Hollyoaks Casting, Mr. Peter Hunt. He gives actors their first TV role like out on a weekly basis. Mickey Jones, one of the top uh, serial drama directors for Coronation Street, Emmerdale, EastEnders and Hollyoaks. Um, there's mastermind sessions with them. There's 10 hours of further coaching with me personally that you're going to get live um, across five two-hour Zoom calls over the next 10 weeks. Um, these are some testimonials. I'll play a couple of these out from people who took the uh, the program last year so you can see how it's worked for them. Um, you might recognize some of these faces from the on this community if you're part of the membership. Um, there are bonuses worth 790 quid. Um, if you register before doors close in a couple of days, including something that I think is priceless called the Ultimate Contacts Database, which is ultimately the, the most comprehensive database of casting director, associate assistant, and agent contact details on the planet. It gets updated uh, roughly every four to six weeks. It's the most bang up to date information going. Um, if you uh, didn't know, there's been loads of changes in the BBC in house casting recently. Their department, there's lots of people who've left and gone on maternity. We've got all the latest details there. You get 12 months support in a private Facebook group. There's nothing to do with the ads on this Facebook group. It's completely separate. And for a limited time, I throw in a bonus as well. The most in depth training I've ever taken people on on building your acting career via social media. Um, that was a training I put on in Media City, charged people 197 quid a ticket. You get access to the recordings of that completely free if you get your place on this program before doors close in a couple of days. But it's actonthis.tv forward slash first role. Um, it's incredible, basically. If you want a blueprint, a step-by-step -step of exactly how to land your first TV role, become a part of this um it's changed the game for uh, for so many actors if people have got any uh, any questions about it um then uh let me know in the chat now i can you know more than happy to uh to answer questions for you um and i'll play out some testimonials from people who have been uh, who have been on the uh, on the program last year um people are saying Alyssa's amazing they've done uh, it seems like a wonderful person she is bobby Alyssa. you'll love you'll love Alyssa. she's so cool she'll be uh honestly she'll be absolutely brilliant tomorrow night you'll come away from that session um feeling totally uh on top of the world phil says so being 55 years old 5'2 and portuguese born and bred in africa you're saying i should just own this and use it for my career hell yeah freaking absolutely phil so many people would use any one of those things to argue for their own limitations. They'd go, I'm 55, it's too late for me, too late to the party, I can't do it. The amount of people over 50 who have taken first TV role fast track and landed their TV jobs, people over 60 and landed their first TV jobs on big shows within six months of taking that program. There's loads. Um, Maggie Evans, um, I've not got a clip of her, but she's um, she landed her first TV role after going through the program last year um, at 60. And before that, she was a teacher. And on her 60th birthday, her son said to her, mom, like, if you could do anything, you know, what, what would you have done? You're 60 now. Come on, like, you know, it's time. Like, if you're going to retire or stop being a teacher, like, what would you have done? And she said, I would have been an actress, but it's too late. And he said, no. That's what you've got to do, then that's the dream you've got to chase. And she quit teaching, um, took this program, and she landed a role with David Tennant and Dan Ryan in a brand new, it's a really uh, interesting drama. It's not out yet, um, about that guy who uh, they reckon the Russians uh, poisoned in London. I can't remember the guy, Vitlenko or something. I can't remember the guy's name. Um, I can see his face so vividly in, in, my, uh, in my head, that, that really famous picture of him in the hospital bed with no hair. 
Um, and uh, yeah, she landed a, a first TV role opposite David Tennant and Dan Ryan, like two, you know, two massive UK actors. Um, I'm going to play out a couple. In fact, I'm going to play for anyone who's over 50 and thinks it's too late for them. I'm going to play a little testimonial out of um, an actress who took this program last year with me in the test group called Gay Shepherd. Um, she had all those limiting beliefs about like being too old to get a first TV role. Um, and she did it. This is like a three minute video or so, but watch this. This might just give people who are thinking, oh, is it too late for me? A little bit of hope. I promise you, it's never too late. The problems I was facing before I joined Fast Track in my acting career was I just felt completely lost in all honesty. I, um, I wasn't getting any auditions and I didn't know how to reach out or who to reach out to. Um, and I, I just didn't know how to progress, in all honesty. So, as I say, I, I came to the acting party quite late, so I, I was quite naive, didn't know anything about anything, really. Um, and I just felt I just needed some direction, uh, and I wasn't getting, you know, I, I just didn't know where, where to turn. The results I got from taking first TV role fast track is I uh, reached out to casting directors, um, I have updated my showreel and got a new agent and feel more focused and motivated. Um, and it led to my first TV role on Coronation Street, which was really great experience, um, being on the cobbles, uh, being, seeing the set on an episode or series I've watched for many years. Um, Everybody was so friendly uh, and it was a great experience and uh, yeah, I really relished the opportunity. I chose the Fast Track over anything else because I really trusted Ross, uh, thought he was a genuine guy and I felt sure that the results that he promised or said would happen uh, would actually happen um, and I trusted in, in what he was saying and knew that he had all the experience and the knowledge that I was lacking and uh, I just thought yeah do it and I'm glad I did. I liked everything about it if I'm totally honest. It was an eye-opener completely because I realised what I wasn't doing what I needed to do um, and it just it everything just made sense. I realised that I'd I needed to invest in me a bit more than I had been. Um, I think it gave me more confidence to do the things that I hadn't been doing. I'm a great procrastinator at the best of times uh, and fairly underconfident. And I think it's just given me a boost in confidence. Um, and just, yeah, taught me that you've got to put yourself out there um, and you can't expect, you know, roles to come knocking on the door. You've got to put the work in to get the results. Although I'd come quite late to the acting party, I didn't know whether I'd left it too late or I felt deep down that I'd left it too late. So I wasn't sure, despite all the the knowledge and and um, the things that the fast track was, was telling you to do, I still didn't know whether that would actually benefit me. But it put my fears aside because I realised that it does, it can happen. You know, you've just got to lose those fears, believe in yourself more and um, listening to everybody else as well, who've got similar sort of fears, not necessarily about the age thing, but similar sort of fears, is it ever going to happen sort of thing. Um, I realised that, yes, you've just got to do it. You've just got to believe in yourself, lose the fears. And the end result was that I did get the, the TV role, so it, it sort of made me realise that yes, it can happen. It just showed me the way to, to do things. Um, and it surprised me that it worked for me. Um, so I realised that I was, you know, um, being fearful for no reason. What I'd say to somebody on the fence about doing the programme is just do it, basically. Don't overthink things, don't worry about anything and just listen and do everything that it says um, and it, it will happen, things will happen. So stop procrastinating like I did for many, 
many months, many years, and just do it, give it a go, because I don't think they'd be disappointed. Act on this TV forward slash first roll to find out more about the uh, the program. But yeah, for anyone worrying about their age or like, you know, God, is it too late? Should I have done it by now? You know, if I'm not, you know, I find that, you know, females particularly, you know, women over 30, so many of my friends, I'm nearly 40 now, but so many of my friends in the industry, particularly when we were training at drama school now, uh, like years ago, they were like, if I've not done it by 30, it's over for me. Like, it's just not. The, the reality is so many people drop out the older they get that actually the, the as the age goes up the competition drops down because a lot of people do quit and they do go well that's it it's over so those who sort of like either come later into the industry and they've got that enthusiasm and vigor at 60 because they're so excited about attacking a new profession um you know they're the ones who make it you know if you've been in the industry a long time and you might have been in it 20 years when you're 60 as long as you've got that vigor and that passion to keep going um, you know, it should happen for you as well. Yes, it takes work. Without a doubt, it takes work. Anyone who goes through first CV or fast track, you will see how much work it requires. You know, but ultimately, if you want a map, you want a blueprint. You never want to feel stuck. You always want to know the direction you're heading in. You know, and what you should be doing on a daily basis. Plus, you would get 12 months support in our Facebook groups. So ultimately, daily accountability. Um, then, you know, that that program. Yeah, anyone who's thinking that it's too late for them, that program, I swear, um, could make a huge, huge difference for you. So, at on this TV forward slash first roll like i say you get all of those bonuses as well if you sign up before doors uh close in i don't know when they're going to be it's going to be a couple of days basically when i hit 100 places um we've currently got 83 84 people signed up for this so um it could be any time to be honest with you but if you are dedicated you really want to um commit this year um check it out that's on this tv forward slash first roll um we've got quite a bit of time for some q a tonight we've got sort of 20 minutes or so um, I'll finish tonight by playing another testimonial out from somebody else, but um, let's have a little uh, a little chat, see what's going down um, in Facebook, in the comments. Abdullah says, hey, all from Saudi Arabia. I think you're our first ever viewer from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> so that's amazing. Thank you so much for uh, for being here. Um, yeah, Josh is saying there, someone asking about drama school, because Greg, you don't need it, mate. Honest to God, you need to train. Without a doubt, you need to train. But if you want to work in TV, I'm talking like, yes, you need to. It's critical you understand the business of the business. So a program like First TV or Fast Track will give you that. And then training in terms of your craft, mate. Weekly acting classes where you'll pay twenty, twenty five quid a week. Um, screen classes. These are screen classes. There's a lot that are run by decent casting directors or working actors themselves up and down the country. Um, places like Act Up North, Act Four TV. Um, there's quite a lot of decent workshops around the country as well. Um, you know, you don't have to spend forty seven grand on a drama school degree. I would recommend people don't do that um, unless you want to work in classical theatre. You want to work at Shakespeare's The Globe and you want to study for the rest of your life Shakespeare, Chekhov, Brecht, um, you know, the traditional playwrights. Um, although I'm sure uh, it was Chekhov, wasn't it? I think that was Russian. That'll probably be boycotted soon. No one will be putting Chekhov plays on him <laughs> if the world goes the way that it's going right now. Uh, but if you really want to um, study those and, 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 and basically succeed in those classical texts, drama school is probably useful, although there's still probably cheaper ways to do that. For TV... My most successful friends, and some of them are, well, one of them's an Academy Award winner, never went to drama school. Never went to drama school. Like, the, the, the guys and girls I know who have made seven figures out of this industry, that's over a million pounds, never went to drama school. So I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not shitting on drama school and, say, and saying don't go, because it is useful for a lot of people. There's a lot of pluses to drama school, but I just think for the amount of money it costs you, genuinely, in my opinion, it's criminal. You can't take nearly £50,000 off an 18-year-old kid, send them out into an industry without giving them a hint of the business of the business training to actually get a job and earn money when they leave. You just shouldn't be doing that. Um, and that's that's why I, I just wish I could... Well, I'm going to try and work with universities to make sure that everybody, at least in the third year of every drama school, gets a year's membership to act on this.tv if their drama school will pay for it for them. Um, to give them the thing that was missing so much in my life when I was at drama school. I came out of drama school clueless. I could act, but I had no idea how to get in front of a casting director. I had no idea who the decent agents were. I didn't know audition technique. I didn't understand self-tapes. I didn't understand self-promotion, social media, creating my own work, tech stuff around you know cameras and microphones and lighting for self-tapes. 
all that sort of shit. I knew nothing about it at all. That's why I set up this community. Um, and it's still to this day not being taught at drama school. They are letting actors down. Um, so don't worry about, you know, about affording drama school. You have to train. Training is really important. I'm a massive advocate of training and, you know, sharpening your saw, so to speak, uh, on a weekly basis. But don't get hung up on, uh, you know, on, you know, I have to go to RADA and spend my 60 grand or whatever it is and live in London and spend even more money on, you know, renting student accommodation and stuff. It's not necessary. Um as a little rant, I just uh, I just went on there, isn't it? Um, and particularly, yeah, over the last couple of years, the people who were paying that money, they were getting Zoom calls like where they couldn't even act. Zoom calls are great for what we do with the business of the business because it's it's it's, it's the theory around you know getting yourself out there. But to just act on a Zoom call, well, they weren't getting anywhere near the value. Uh, they should have been getting for uh, for the money they were they were paying the last couple of years. I know drama schools couldn't do anything about that. It's certainly not their fault that COVID hit. But um, it's interesting. It's freaking interesting. Sarah says this is brilliant. We'll have to rejoin that's on this. Sarah, come on, what are you doing? Sort it out. Get yourself get yourself back on the site. Um, join us tomorrow night with Alyssa Rogers. You'll love it. Honestly, she's absolutely wicked. Uh, Sarah said shat myself on my first TV audition after drama school many years ago. Hence, didn't get it. It's just because they let you down. Not even your fault. Like, honestly, this is what I mean. It's just, we need to, I don't know. I need to charge, start charging £47,000 for ads on this and maybe people would, uh, would take it seriously and, you know, <laughs> like, I'll give people, like, a student loan uh, to get a membership. But no, 247 quid a year for ads on this and it'll give you a, an education, seriously, that's probably 100 times more effective than drama school. You need to be able to act, though. You need the talent. I can't do that for you. Um, Tamsin says, what are some good questions to ask casting directors in a workshop? Try to think of ones that may uh, n- that, that may not have at every session. It depends. On, well, all of many, the best questions to ask anybody, Tamsin, are the ones that you genuinely need the answer to. What I find most actors do at workshops is they put their hand up and they, answer, they ask some bullshit question that's so simple that everyone in the room basically knows or is so obvious and they do it just so they can have a chat to the casting director for two minutes. And it's almost like, look at me, speak to me, and yes, you'll remember me, and you'll give me an audition. Um, so uh, don't do that. Um, the best questions are the ones that are authentic and you genuinely need an answer to. And they very often come up during the session and during the work. So there might be something from your scene that throws you, or a question you didn't ask, you know, in terms of, I don't know. I always like to talk a little bit about the script that I'm working on or I'm being auditioned for with the casting director and just sort of get clarification on if they agree and stuff, you know, and there's, and there's really subtle things as well. Like, you know, when you're going in, maybe you're going in, I always remember Andy Morgan on a, on a session we did for acts on this great casting director, cast uh, Idris Elba in Luther. Um, he was saying, listen, you know, when I'm casting the smaller roles, particularly, um, he likes to sort of test and see if those actors who are coming in for those two lines as the copper, I've done any kind of like thinking around the background of that of, of that role. And it's not like overthinking it and putting, you know, a whole history to this character who comes in and says two lines. But for, he gave a great example. He said there was one scene where a copper had to come and say a few lines to a suspected, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the word on Facebook Live, so I might not do, but someone who had basically been abusing children. Um, and he asked these people who were coming in, you know, so this, this copper you're playing, do you think he has kids himself? And nobody could answer that question because they'd not thought about it. And he was like, that that, that sort of question, if you'd asked it yourself, when you're dealing with someone who's suspected of abusing children, the way you react and respond to them is going to be so different. Well, not so different, but it is going to be subtly different if you yourself have got children because you're going to be able to put yourself into that, you know, mum or dad's shoes or whatever of that victim, you know, and thinking, God, what if this was my kid? It's going to give you some inference around the, uh, you know, the the performance and the way that you're going to, you know, you're going to put those lines across, even if you've got six lines or whatever, and that's it. You've got a tiny little day player role in a drama. Um, so I think sometimes just discussing stuff like that can be quite useful, asking questions around, um, you know, little unknown kind of uh, audition hacks like that. We talk about it every time on uh, on actsonthis.tv. Every time we get a casting director on every week, you know, what are those kind of you know those sort of killer strategies and hacks around actually just making a performance stand out without sort of it being too much? Because the last thing you want to do if you've got six lines is go in and you know be all jazz hands and just you know look at me, look at me. You're there. You're to ultimately 
facilitate the story. You're, you're playing a procedural role. Um, but I find some things will come up in scripts like that. So if you've got a particularly interesting script um, at a workshop, you know, talk about that. Like, talk that you've actually thought about the role. You've thought about your craft. You've thought about actually, you know, delivering something that's not just the same as the other 20 people in the room. But just don't ask questions for the sake of asking questions. Um, and sometimes I think you end up doing that if you try and think of a question before you go in. Sometimes the best questions come up spur of the moment on the spot. So if you're present in the room, as opposed to thinking 15 minutes in the future, what am I going to ask? What am I going to ask? You're not really listening to what's going on at that moment. So just be present, soak it all up. And, you know, and, and you know, I'm sure an interesting discussion will come out of that. Um, but yeah, sometimes and we get it on ads on this, you know, I'll just be honest. Sometimes, you know, I'll look down the chat because obviously I want to bring on members of the community. I bring them on camera every week. Um, and, uh, you know, I want people to to ask interesting questions to our guests. And sometimes I'll go down the Q&A box and I'll be like, you've asked that question, but we've answered that six times during this chat and you're still asking it. Like, have you listened to anything we've done so far? Um, or you're asking a question that we've asked, you know, a hundred times before. You already know the answer to that. So I know you're answering it purely because you want to make a connection with this person. And, you know, I get it. I understand it. Actors do that and they want to do that. But it doesn't lead to the most interesting conversations that everybody benefits from. Um, so just ask questions that are legit and authentic and that you know you genuinely want the answer to because if you really want the answer to it I guarantee you at least 50% of the other people in the room will want the answer to that as well even if they didn't realise they needed the answer to it sometimes that's amazing where I'll sit in a session and go shit I didn't even know I needed to ask that question um, someone asked it for me but the answer was really useful for me as well um, so definitely just be as authentic as, uh, as you can Uh Phil says, how do you know if you can actually act? Film yourself, Phil. Shoot some scenes, watch it back, and just actually be really honest with yourself. Do you believe the words that are coming out of your mouth, or can you tell you are acting? So obvious when someone's acting. And and people are like, oh, but maybe I'm not qualified to, to you know, be able to judge that. Well, you are, because everyone in here, I'm guessing, watches TV regularly. So as audience members, you are absolutely qualified to say, I believe that performance or I don't. So you need to watch your own stuff back objectively and go, do, did I, do I really believe what I'm saying there? Or do I sound like I'm reading it? You know, am I playing? Sometimes I watch people's show reels and I've seen, I've seen a couple today and, there's, and their costume is wearing them. They, they're like, oh, if I put a doctor's coat on, then I'm just, that's it. People are going to take me as a doctor. I don't need to do, you know, don't need to act, you know, like I don't need to do anything, basically. The people are just going to believe me that I'm a doctor. And the way they deliver the lines, I'm like, there's no way in a million years you're a doctor because you, you, you don't sound like you know what you're talking about with the language you're using. Doctors use that every day. They wouldn't be overly pronouncing medication or diseases and things like this is just language they use every single day as you would do in your job whatever your job is um and people just think when they put a white coat on that's it i'm gonna be i'm people are gonna buy me as a doctor no 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 no. absolutely not i just see that coat wearing the actor as opposed to the actor wearing the coat so um you've got to, you've got to record yourself the only way you will know if you're any good or not is to record yourself and watch it back same if you know i guess it's like if you wanted to be a singer go into a recording studio sing a song listen to it back do you sound like the songs you hear on the radio <laughs> or do you sound like a strangled cat? So uh, yeah, and go to acting classes, get a feedback from other people, let other people watch your stuff. Don't just show it to your mom and your girlfriend because of course they're going to tell you you're great because they love you. Um, you know, get objective, uh, impartial advice and feedback um, on stuff you are doing. But that's the only way uh, you're going to know if you... Um, you know, it's the only way you're going to know if you uh, if you can act or not. Um, definitely. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, what else is going down in the chat? Um, thank you, Phil. He says, thanks. No, no worries. Uh, Joe says, I sent over my Blythe Spirit scene. Hope you can watch it. I'm not, if, you, if it's via email or something, Joe, I've been, because I did, I opened first TV or fast track registration on Saturday. Absolutely swamped. I'll do my absolute best, but I'm trying to get through a good 50 emails once I finish this live tonight to get back to people who've got questions about the program. Most questions, by the way, if you are, are interested in fa uh, First TV Roll Fast Track 2022, uh, you will find most of those questions probably answered on the page, actonthis.tv forward slash first roll. I've written a, a really in-depth page out there on absolutely everything. So people are emailing me questions that I'm like, if you just actually read all this stuff, 
Um, it tells you about every single module on there, what you're going to get, the free coaching, um, the five module program, the workbook, what's in each module, the bonus sessions, these mastermind sessions here, the uh, live coaching. Um, there's a testimonials from people there who've been through the program and landed their first TV role or multiple TV roles now. A lot about me there, the bonuses, everything that you uh, you get. But people are emailing me questions and I'm like, if you just went on that page, you would uh, find out everything. So um, if you are interested, please uh, go check that out before... Um, emailing me just in case uh it's already been answered and, and if it's not of course i'll uh, i'll reply as fast as i can um definitely james says uh if not ask one of us who have been on it yes james has been on it james can uh, james can help joe says what are you running for us who did it last year there will probably be an option for people if, the, if people want a refresher who did it last year and they want a refresher in terms of to join the live calls this year which will be five two-hour live calls one based on each unit there probably will be a special deal that I'm going to run for those people if you just want the live coaching. Obviously, it's not going to cost anywhere near the price of the full program because you've already invested in that. Um, but if you want to get the 10 hours of live coaching, um, there will probably be an offer. I'm going to send that out um, sometime towards the end of this week. The, the first live call doesn't start till the 13th of April. So we've got two weeks yet. So um, when I can figure out a deal for that, I'll uh, I'll let people know and I'll, I'll drop you guys a uh, an email. Uh, Greg says, my wife says I won't make it, but but it makes you determined. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's interesting, isn't it? When your spouse is like, nah, you know, I know why people do that. And she's probably just trying to protect you, Greg, from uh, like expense, pride, rejection, you know, any kind of hurt that this industry can kind of bring you because you do need a tough skin to be in it. Um, but sometimes without sounding harsh that's her limiting beliefs that really were never meant to be your own so you cannot honor even if it's your wife like even if it's your mum, right you know our mums and our dads are probably the most important people in our lives um you know you cannot allow someone else's limiting beliefs and these are beliefs that are probably given in good faith to just try and protect you to become your own so many people told i told you a friend of mine not to crowdfund for a film because they'd crowdfunded for films before and failed and they were embarrassed and they were like i didn't get any money only my mum and my neighbor gave me any money for the crowdfunder i look stupid and they told this person in particular don't do it it's not going to work for you had she listened to them and not crowdfunded she needed ten thousand pounds for this film this short film had she had she honored that limit and belief as her own and went actually yeah you're right i'll look stupid if i don't make the money she wouldn't have won an Oscar. Um, so, you know, she ended up crowdfunding a film, made 13 grand actually on the crowdfunder, made the film. Um, it did incredibly well on the festival circuit, became uh, BAFTA and Oscar qualifying, and it won um, the BAFTA for the best short film in 2019, I think, 2019-ish. Um, so she wouldn't have done that. Uh, it might have been 2018. She wouldn't have done that, basically, um, had she listened to the limiting beliefs of other people. So be careful... In even with your wife, even with wives and boyfriends and husbands and girlfriends and mums and dads and brothers and sisters, please be careful on what you uh, honour as your own because um, someone probably put that belief in her head as well. It was probably never meant to be her her belief system. You know, a lot of people think it's them. They're like, oh, but I'm just a negative person. No, you're not. You're not. You're not. You're not. Somebody at some point put that belief in your head. No matter how long ago it might have been, fifty years ago, but somebody. We are not born to argue for our own limitations and to argue with people about why we won't do what we want to do. Other people do that for us and then we take those beliefs on ourselves if we're not careful. So be careful of who you... Um, not talking about your wife here, Greg. In general, be careful who you're spending the most time with because you will become them, basically. You will absolutely become the average of the people you hang out with. Um, I'm not telling you <laughs> to quit your relationship greg i'm not talking about that at all i'm talking like friends and stuff just be careful try and surround yourself by inspiring people um who are supporting you and um you know and also are doing the things that you want to do surround yourself with the people who have achieved what you want to achieve i think that's so important for me if i want to achieve something i'm like right who can i find who's maybe five to 25 years ahead of me and i can hang out with them and learn from them and i can offer them value you know i might not be able to give them money or things but i can maybe offer them my, my time i can volunteer for them i can help them promote stuff i can go and work for them for free for a little bit in order to get some coaching or some mentoring um 
that's really powerful because I mean that's what's great about first TV or fast track is I've rinsed and repeated this blueprint to land over 30 TV jobs. And now I'm like, look, my entire life experience of landing jobs in this industry, I'm going to put into one program. Um, so you get the benefit of 25 years in one 22 hour program. So if you want 25 years knowledge in 22 hours, um, you will fast track your career 25 years, basically in less than a full day. I mean, I wouldn't recommend you taking 22 hours in one day. You need to sleep. But, um, that's why I love autobiographies from people. I'm like, I can get 40 years of knowledge on how Richard Branson succeeded in business by reading his book, Screw It, Let's Do It. Um, it's incredible. People underestimate and underrate books and autobiographies massively. You know, get the audio book if you don't want to read. But like, if you can condense 40 years of experience and success and you can read that in a weekend, it's priceless. Um, so just think about who you're uh, you're hanging out with um you know it's it's really really important don't hang out with people who um i don't know want to complain about how hard this industry is um or want to just complain about how bad the world is i know there's a lot of shit going on in the world right now but without a doubt there's some horrific stuff going on in the world and we know statistically the news will report 17 pieces of negative news to us for every one piece of positive news we know that's a stat um, and they do that, obviously, because they want us to be fearful and they want us to have a thirst for everything that can hurt us so we can preserve ourselves and protect ourselves from it. So there is a, a natural negativity bias within our brains that goes, I need to know everything that can hurt me, because if I know about everything that can hurt me, then I can protect myself from it. So it's, it's you know, it's built into us and, it, and, and that's how we work. That's how we should operate as well, in a way. Um, but, um, you know, you don't want to... Uh, focus on all of the bad because i promise you today there will be so many incredible things happening around the world that would just fill your soul with joy and light as well but we don't get told about all those kind of things so sometimes you've got to either create them yourself or you've got to search for them um, and look for those things yourself and you know spend time with friends and family and just you know reconnect with people go for that coffee you know don't just spend all your time worrying about the acting industry and where your next audition is coming from you know stop and smell the roses now and again um there's incredible stuff going on in the world it's never really but there's never people will, will be thinking i'm crazy but there's never been a better time to be alive there just isn't you know even with a pandemic even with a crazy dictator potentially causing huge wars in the world um there's still to this day never been a better time to be alive where if you are born particularly if you're watching this in the uk or a first world country you know your opportunity out there is pretty limitless if you're prepared to work for it um, and it might take time and it might take decades but time is going to pass anyway so you might as well give it a go um it really has honestly never we've never had it better and i know the world today will just tell you if you watch the media and the news they'll try and make opinions for you and try and create your belief system for you you will think oh it's all gone to shit pass me the wine and I see so many people doing it and like, no, you're missing the point. Just drinking your life away, like hiding from stuff and, and, and convincing yourself through limiting beliefs you have about your success that, you know, your success is completely dictated to you by chance, luck and powerful other people. And it just isn't like, honest to God, you have so much power yourselves in this industry and outside of this industry, genuinely to go after what you want. Like, but it's hard. It takes work. It requires hustle and people don't want to do it. They would rather have a pizza and a bottle of wine and forget about their troubles. But honestly, like, just just seek out those people who aren't those people. Um, seek out those people who are doing the things that you want to do and have achieved the things that you want to achieve. And I promise you, shit starts getting, you know, really, really good. Um, right, I've, I feel like I've just basically just, like, gone off on a massive tangent. But hopefully some people will resonate with that and you'll, and you'll get it a little bit. Fingers crossed. Um, I'm going to uh, have a little look at the comments and then I'm going to play out, just to finish, I'm going to play one more testimonial out from the test group. Uh, Josh, I'll play yours out, if you're still here, um, from First TV Roll Fast Track. I took a test group of actors through this last year as I was developing the program um, and uh, about two dozen of them have got their First TV role now um, off the back of the program. I'll play you Josh's uh, testimonial, his story out in a minute. Uh, if you want to find out more about this program, if you are dedicated and you are really dedicated, you want to land your first TV role this year, you know, you're not going to allow those limiting beliefs to rule you and say, no, nah, you're never going to make it. Act on this.tv forward slash first role. Go and read all about the program. If you want to commit to working with myself and the group, the whole community we have here uh, for 12 months to make it happen, um, 22 hours of coaching, 12 hours of pre-recorded coaching, 10 hours 
uh, with me. Um, get yourself over. Yeah, at sunday.tv forward slash first roll. I would love to work with you. Doors will be open for just a few more days. Josh is still here. Yes, Josh. You're going to get your starring moment at the end of this broadcast. Um, Greg says, I do have a lot of support, but I've hit a wall and don't know where to go now. Um, you need to... Um, Change it up, Greg. Like, you know, there's that old phrase, isn't there? I don't think it was Einstein. I think it was Henry Ford who said it, didn't he? Or was it, I think people people credit it to Einstein, but I don't think it was him who said it. But he said doing the same thing over and over again, you know, it ultimately, you know, you can't expect a different result by doing the same thing over and over again. It's like the definition of insanity or something. So whatever you've been doing to this point might have worked to this point, but maybe you've got to change stuff up. Seek out people, like I say, who have achieved what you have achieved. If you want to get involved in that on this community, there's hundreds of us in this community who have, are working in TV like every week, you know, at least landing cell takes and auditions on a weekly or a monthly basis. Um, kick the tires on the community at on this.tv. You don't have to do the first role training program, but you know, you could come and join the live calls we do every week. That would give you a community, a support network. It would give you accountability. Um, you know, you come and hang out on a month. If you can't afford a membership, you know, it's only 24 quid a month, but if you can't afford that six quid a week, come and hang out with us on a Monday night for free here. You know, it's, um, I would do my best to put out as much contact, uh, as much content, um, as I can for free. You know, I understand, you know, people, um, aren't rolling in money right now you know myself included the my electricity bill <laughs> they reckon they're putting up to 172 quid a month i'm like i live on my own i don't understand <laughs> how can i be spending 172 quid a month on electric it is crazy and sharon says here my dad wrote his autobiography 70 plus years of incidents and accidents that's the title that sounds amazing we should we've all got a story to tell that's what i freaking love about life and human beings and people think oh there's nothing interesting about me of course there is it's your life and it's a life i haven't lived i want to know about it i'd love to stand on a street corner in manchester and interview random people i do so many interviews with famous actors and directors and writers and producers and casting directors and stuff and yeah they're great and they're interesting but i think there's people out there who are not in the public eye who are not on tv who have not won all these awards and are just as interesting i'd love to go and just do a i don't know some sort of i don't know what i'd call it uh I don't know, corner stories or something and just stand on the busiest street corner in Manchester and just collar people and go, listen, just tell me a little bit about your life. What are you doing right now? How have you got here? Uh, not literally how have you got here, like on the bus. Um, I mean, like, you know, what's brought you to this this point in your life? I think it'd be fascinating. Um, so I think we can all learn so much from uh, from each other. And James says, I always feel like I can achieve anything when I watch Ross, almost my personal guru. <laughs> James, the thing, James, the thing is, man, you can. Honest to God. I mean, there's certain things, you know, that I, you know, you have to be uh, not realistic to a sense of like, oh, I have to really, you know, put a lid on my aspirations. I know with my eyesight, I, you know, because I've got a visual impairment, I'm not going to be a Formula One driver. But there's a million other things that are going to be equally as cool that I can do. Um, and yeah, you know, if acting is the thing for you and there's nothing holding you back, um, ultimately, you know, by yourself and, you know, the tenacity you need and, and the hustle and you've got that hustle and that drive, mate. Yeah, of course you can do it. Absolutely, freaking lutely And look at that. Sharon, Sharon as a great saleswoman, is, uh, is, has put a link to her dad's autobiography on Amazon. If anyone wants to check it out, 70 years of incidents and accidents, uh, it's, in the, it's in the chat right now. That's amazing. Um, right. And I think she's... What have you put there, Sharon? I bet, I bet knowing Sharon, I bet she's even put an affiliate link <laughs> so she gets like a 5% commission of her dad <laughs> or something like that. I love it, Sharon. Always hustling. Um, that's awesome. Right. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to yeah, I'm going to play Josh's testimonial out. So Josh is just one of um, dozens of actors who went through the first TV or fast track program last year to help me sort of formulate this program, test it, put it through its paces. Um, a couple of dozen actors who have been through the program already have landed their first TV roles. Some multiple TV roles, lots multiple auditions and, and you know TV roles and auditions as well. Um, they were you know London auditions way more regularly now, or just they never were London auditions and now they are. Uh, a lot of actors who have been through the program have got agents, new agents. Ultimately, there's a load of people flying through this program who are doing so much better than they've ever done. Um, uh, doors are going to be open for just a couple more days act on this.tv forward slash first role if you want to get involved in this you can find out all about it on that page if you sign up before the doors close there's 790 pounds worth of bonuses um, and this is a 12 month commitment guys so there's 12 months basically of support uh, included in this program um, i would love to work with you if you are looking for your first cv role this year only if you're dedicated, not people who are going to dabble or just, you know, expect to buy a program and then that's it. We'll do all the work for you. You have to cooperate. You've got to go through all the modules. You've got to implement the stuff. You've got to hustle. Um, this is something that will take you months to implement, but it ultimately is 
a proven blueprint, a proven map of exactly what you need to do. Maybe you've been trying for years, you've got nowhere. If you're like Josh, you can do this in just a few months. Uh, but this is Josh's story. Josh, thanks for being here, mate. And thanks to everybody for being here. really means the world um, that you spend these Monday nights with me. If you're listening on the audio experience, it means the world as well. You're watching on a replay anywhere. Thank you so much. Um, come and get involved in the community if you can. At's on this.tv. Um, or at on this.tv forward slash first roll for this program. And Kate says, do it. I love it. Kate's doing it. Kate, awesome. Uh, awesome to have you here. Thanks for uh, for being here. And everybody, um, James says, yes, Josh, absolutely top guy, well-deserved. It is, and there's going to be um, plenty more roles on the way for you, Josh. I, Josh, I am sure, calling you Josh then. Jo- Who remembers Josh Stone? What happened to her? Um, I'm not going to waffle on now. I'm going to go. This is Josh's story. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night with Alyssa Rogers, 7.30 p.m. at sonthis.tv um, if you want to get a membership and join us for that live Zoom call as well. Until next time, love to you all. Have an amazing week. Believe anything can happen. Put the work in. And uh, yeah, let's go get them this week. Until next time, bye for now. Problems I was facing before I did the fast track was that I came out of university and not knowing anything about the TV industry. I came from a theatre background, done theatre all my all my career, um, so I was a bit clueless as to what was going on and what to do, and the problems was I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing any work, I wasn't being proactive, I was just sitting around basically waiting for things to happen. Um, so I kind of needed something to put me on the right track and put me in front of people and get myself out there a bit more because I literally had no idea what I was getting into. The results that I got from doing the fast track role is that the main one is I got my first TV role. I did Emmerdale. I got my first job in Emmerdale. It was such an amazing experience. Like seeing the set, it was it was so much bigger than you think it would be. It was amazing. Everyone was really nice. The the crew was really nice. They talked you through everything. I told them it was my first role, and they it, it made me feel like it it wasn't my first role. And it was just good to finally be on set and everything that I worked towards, it, it finally paired off. And now I'm emailing more casting directors, they know me, I know them, and it's just, it's just all coming together. I think I chose TV Roll Fast Track over anything else was because I saw what was in, involved in it. I saw that there was a clear blueprint, a clear step-by-step of what I was going to be taught and what I was going to need to get out in the industry and get those jobs. Um, and I think that's, if you do a workshop, that's fair enough. I mean, you, you get a one time with casting directors, you, you do a script and that's fine. But with this, there was everything in there that you needed from headshots, show reels, to emailing, to getting to know people and just getting yourself out there. And it was, I think that was one of the reasons it's because I needed a platform to build on. And so with doing that, I, I, can, I, I achieved a lot of things and still am. I've got all the knowledge in front of me. I've got all the. I've been spoon-fed all this knowledge. I now need to put it into action. I think that's the best thing that I liked. I, I was given everything. I was given everything, and then I just had to go and do it myself. I'm always concerned about price. I'm always wanting to save money, not spending anything that I don't need to spend on. And would it work for me? Would it be beneficial? Uh, that's like with everything I do in my life. Um, the price set me back quite a bit, but to get over that, I just kind of stops being fearful about things and just thought it's not going to put me in a worse position than I am now and it's going to better me and it did better me because I ended up booking my first TV role and I got the money back instantly just by doing one one role, one little role in a, in a TV show so I mean I can't complain really. Now my acting career it feels a lot brighter, it feels much more energised, I feel like I never know what to expect these days, getting up in the morning. Uh, you're always waiting for that phone call, it's exciting. I'm being way more proactive, like I said before, I came out of university, I was sitting on my on my backside doing nothing, I wasn't doing any work, I wasn't emailing anyone, and now I can't go a day without going, oh, I need to I need to do at least an hour after work, or I need to do a couple of hours, just, just to get them email sent out, or look for that job, or, or talk to my agent, get a submissions list. So it's, I'm being way more proactive than I was. If someone is on the fence about it and they're unsure whether to do the course or not, it's just think about why you want to do it. Like, what's it going to benefit you? Why is it going to benefit you? Why are you on, why, ask yourself why you're on the fence. Like, what's the reasons why you don't want to do it? 
because nine times out of ten you do want to do it there's just something holding you back and you need to figure out why it's holding you back and and just just jump into it jump, like jump into anything if you if you're not going to jump into it fully you're not going to get the best out of it so make sure you're fully committed to it before you you actually just yeah just know what you want and know why you want it